Regardless of the fact that we won the domestic treble, we still failed in our quest to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We came closer than we ever have before, but we still found ourselves a couple of steps away from the promised land. This year, our second full season at Saprissa is our year. <laughs> Of course, still a lot of football to be played to prove me right. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 63 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane, wrapping up the 2030-2031 season at Saprissa. Our signing of the year, according to the board, was Jose Pablo Espinosa. I would disagree. I think that was Vitan Tusha. He made 56 appearances for us out of the 72 that we ultimately played in full competition. 25 goals. 14 assists with a 7.18 rating. He was absolutely spectacular on the left wing, sometimes at striker as well. We also picked up Juan Diego Secaria. We got him from Liberia. We paid $3 million. He made 24 appearances, 21 of them starts, 7 goals, 6 assists after he absolutely obliterated us in the opening stage playoffs. William Ramirez was very solid coming in primarily as a backup on the left wing, sometimes in the middle. 11 goals, 11 11 assists. Willem Getz got him from Dinamo on a free. He made 46 starts, 10 goals, 12 assists, but at over $15,000 a week, he was our most expensive player. And I think we can get a little more bang for our buck, especially if we can get some value in selling Getz. Again, got him on a free. It will be pure profit. As I mentioned in the intro, a very Good season for us. We won the opening stage by 13 points. It was a bit closer in the closing stage, but again, crowned champions. We did only make it to the Continental Places playoff in the Central American Cup, but we beat Herediano and earned ourselves a spot in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, where we made it to the quarterfinals, where we were knocked out by Olympia of Honduras, the exact same team that knocked us out of the regular brackets of the Central American Cup. But along the way, we were able to get past Red Bull New York and CF Monterey. So knocking off a club from both MLS and Liga Emma Equis proves that we have the ability to make it deep in the competition. We found ourselves as the runner-up of the Copa Costa Rica, dropping a 2-1 decision on the road to Punta Arenas in the final. But we were able to knock off Cartagena. How ironic our first win and our final win of the year against the same team to win the Supercopa. Diego Moreira won a ton of awards, named the fans player of the season, also the young player of the year. The goal of the season went to William Ramirez. Our top goal scorer was Vitan Tusha with 25. Alejandro Braun, 15 assists, considering he played most of his time coming in off of the bench. Absolutely fantastic and one of the reasons why we gave him a new two-year contract. A number of records broken as well. The most overall goals by a player went to Vitan Tushi with 25. Edward Lopez scored the most league goals by a player in a season with 18. Mohamed Kante managed 19 clean sheets over all competitions. And the highest transfer fee we ever paid was for Juan Diego Secaria. However, we cannot rest on our laurels. Depth. Still an issue on this team. Michael Sambataro is going to be coming back from his loan, so we should shore up that left defensive spot. Hichem Bakar has been excellent. Luis Mora, mm, not so much afterwards. Goalkeeper, we definitely need a backup. David Hernandez proved in the penultimate match of the season that he is not ready for prime time. We could use extra depth at the center back position, although Randy Duarte has proved to be a very versatile team member. And on the right wing, I already alluded to it, but Willem Getz at $15,000 a week, 10 goals, 12 assists, while very good, just ain't good enough for the money. So we're probably going to be looking for a new right winger. We're going to be looking for additional depth across the front three to add to Edward Lopez, Secaria, Vitan Tusha, and Eduardo Cordero. We're very set at striker, but we're going to be taking a look at the international market because I think Nassim Innocente, he may also not be long for Saprissa. Again, making a lot of money. He plays very well, but I think that we can improve at that position and still get younger at the same time. Knowing that our options were probably going to evaporate very quickly, we hopped on picking up a backup goalkeeper. And to that, we turned to newly relegated Perez Zeladon. Alexander Lescano signed with them on a free at the beginning of the last season. 
was their backup, made zero appearances, but at six foot three, his command of the area is pretty good. Great aerial reach. His positioning reflexes are all decent. He will easily slot in as a number two and be a very vast improvement over David Hernandez. Scoring 21 goals on the year, earned a new contract for 23-year-old forward Edward Lopez. He's going to be making a little bit more money, about $400 a week. Three years, the extension on this one. And ultimately, whether or not he starts up front, he is a very valuable player to have around. We've extended the loans of some of our youngsters. Pablo Alfaro is going to spend yet another season at AD Sarchi. Likewise, for Juan Carlos Sabaya, he'll remain on loan at Escorpianis. And it will be another year of seasoning at Uruguay for Mauricio Fonseca. We have decided to bring Gerald Taylor back once his loan at Comunicaciones ends. He does have one year remaining on his contract. We felt we moved him out for a little bit more playing time. He was also a little bit unhappy because he had fallen down on the pecking order, hoping the year away will make him a little bit more amenable to a backup role. We can use him as center back and at right back as well. And he's Costa Rican, so he's not taking up a foreign player spot. So any additional coverage we can get on the back line, well, that's a good thing. Leaving the team permanently, however, is 24-year-old forward Johnny Castro. He really just did not get the playing time he was looking for in the latter portion of the season. $185,000 coming our way as Castro has secured a permanent move to Herediano. Admittedly, I did toy with the idea of reaching way up north and pulling Alan Didier down to Costa Rica. But in the end, the 23-year-old, just not fast enough, I'm sure his finishing would be fantastic on this team. However, just could not justify using one of our five foreign slots on our former Vancouver star. Like we mentioned earlier, one of our objectives was to free open at least one foreigner slot and save some money in the process. The best way to do that would be to sell Willem Getz. 1.5 million to Mexican side Carataro. He is off after one year with the club, yes, he had over 20 goal contributions, but again, at $15,000 per week, we weren't really getting the bang for the buck that we were hoping for. There you go. My earlier feelings were confirmed. I knew that Vitan Tusha was our signing of the season because he was named the Primera División signing of the season. We got him for free. He scored 16 goals, added 14 assists in 40 league appearances. What more did you want? The board wanted to sit down and chat about my feelings on whether or not we should expand the amount of money available to our scouting staff. I said, why don't we improve the youth coaching instead? The board said, that's a fantastic idea. We're going to think about that for a little while. But in the meantime, we like our idea better. So we're going to do that. Ticking closer and closer to the start of the new season, just four weeks away, we are going to open up next year's opening stage at home against Santos, the very same team that we finished off the regular season last year or the closing stage. You know what I mean. We've got Clasico National Derbies coming up on August the 24th and October 26th against Alajuelense. And the final day of the opening stage, we are hosting San Carlos November 22nd. Now that the transfer window is open, we discovered that sometimes the best player for your future is one from your past. One year removed from leaving the club to go to Mexico, Freddy Gonzalez is coming home. Yes, it would have been cheaper for us just to keep him around in the long run, but I think that year experience abroad has made Gonzalez a better player. He's going to cost us 15000 a week, so basically the money we're saving on uh, Willem Getz is now going into the pocket of Freddy Gonzalez, and it cost us $1.6 million. But in the end, Gonzalez was not happy in Mexico, and he was very happy to come home. Meanwhile, the group stage draw for the CONCACAF Central American Cup has taken place. We are going to be paired up with Port Loyola from Belize, Real Esteli for the second straight year from Nicaragua, Real Sociedad from Honduras. Luckily, we avoided Olympia for the second consecutive year and Zacapa from Guatemala. A little something unexpected on the eve of the Supercopa against Herediano. We have received an offer for $1.3 million for Mohamed Conte. He is our starting goalkeeper. We obviously don't have a lot behind him. 
Mescano, David Hernandez, none of those guys are stepping up for the long term. We do have irons in the fire for this position, including a juicy looking trialist trying to get him in on board just in case. Conte puts us in the position where we are not allowed to say no. Meanwhile, Nassim Innocente has rejected a deal to send him to Cartagines. We also had gotten an offer from Turvana, but for less money, so we tried to match it with the Cartagines offer. Unfortunately, that's apparently where Innocente really wanted to go. He got a little upset. We had to actually up his asking price, which works for us, especially if we get somebody to offer it. But with Cartagines out of the way, Innocente remains on the squad. So as such, Nassim Innocente is not going to factor into our lineup as we take on Herediano in the Supercopa. However, Mohamed Conte, well, he will. He's going to be in goal. Valverde, Gonzalez, Vieira, and Cordero are going to be our back for Aaron Vieira coming back from loan. Haven't quite found another destination for him. He is a foreign player. Will we be able to keep him around with the rest of our signings? Time will tell. Aquista and Alejandro Braun will man the midfield. It's going to be Diego Morera at the 10. Vitan Tusha on the left wing. Sicaria on the right. Edward Lopez starting up front. Hopefully we'll see if Lopez is going to continue to earn that new three-year contract. If he doesn't, well, we've got a couple of guys lined up who could potentially take over at striker available on a free as well we're trialing a whole bunch of players all across the team just to see where we could potentially improve herediano saprisa in the supercopa we are on the road for this one could this be our first piece of hardware for the year we won this and the opening and closing stages to earn a domestic treble last year almost made the quadruple but we could not beat Punta Arenas in the Costa Rican Cup. And even though we seem to have owned Herediano over recent times, a very cagey affair to start things off in the first 25 minutes or so. Seven shots on goal to one in favor of Saprisa. First highlight of the match, set piece. Herrera sending it in. Koulibaly will clear it, but Lopez will track it down, play it into the middle. Intercepted there by Kuhn. Sent forward looking for Kodabaya, but Akista's got it. Alejandro Brand will play it back for Akista. Plays catch with Bran, switches it over, Secaria dropping it back for Vieira, looking for additional space. Once again up for Secaria, playing it into the box. Tusha will get it, drop it back, Valverde chips it, Secaria puts it home to make it 1-0, Saprisa. Well, if that's the only highlight we're going to see for the first half, then at least it was a good one. Alejandro Brand stepping in front of that one, but he will lose control. Hernandez playing it up to Vargas as Herediano looking to go the other way. Hernandez once again along the left side, moving it toward the middle of the pitch. Poros up for Gar Vargas. Steps around one man. Can get past Zacharia, but Vargas able to get the ball back. Perez pushing it forward, taking a shot from range. Conte dives. Doesn't need to make a save, though, as it sails out into the crowd. One minute of added time. Time comes and goes, and after 45 minutes, it is Saprisa leading Herediano on the road by a score of 1-0. to nil. But if we want to get our hands on that trophy, we need to step things up in the final 45. Off of the corner, Marrera sending it in. Gonzalez with the first header of the match. Off of a corner, it goes right into Shamara's hands, but Marrera going to get another opportunity about five minutes into this second half. Ball cleared away weakly. Vieira will nod it over to Marrera. Getting it back. Ferreira. Back post. Tusha clanks it off the crossbar. And Cordoba will head that behind for a third corner opportunity in this second half for Diego Marrera. Sending it in. The in swinger. Can't get ahead on it. Koulibaly. Great clearance. But Akista is right there. Pushing it forward quickly. Valverde into the box. Tusha hits the post again. Second piece of woodwork for Vitan Tusha as the ball will be cleared out for a Saprisa throw. Unlucky as we close in to 20 minutes remaining in this match. Vitan Tusha will come out. William Ramirez will take his place. Jorge Valverde feeling a little tired. So Luis Mora will man that left wingback position. Aaron Vieira will also step off the pitch as we make a triple change. Randy Duarte coming in and making his season debut. So far, this match has been pretty much all Saprisa. We are leading on the scoreboard 1-0. It should be so much more. A couple of unlucky attempts from Vitan Tusha clanging off the woodwork. Lopez looking to spin it towards Secaria, but Azafefa steps in front of it. Played ahead. Perez 
Up the left wing, Vargas holds up play a bit, but will turn it over. Steven Aquista. Ramirez with it. Plays it into the middle. Lopez behind the defense. He will poke it past Shamoro for the second goal of the match. It's already on O'Neill. Saprisa 2. I love how Lopez gave a little kick as a celebration in that one. That was pretty cute. Ball sent forward. Deep into the Saprisa end. Cordero will track it down. Play it ahead. Braun up the right wing. Secaria moves it past one man. Looks to keep it uh, as he goes up the sideline. Secaria still pushing it deep across. Ramirez, his header just a bit too strong. And that's out into the crowd as a goal kick for Herediano. Brand off of the free kick. Looking for Duarte. Isn't going to find him. Yara will clear it toward the near sideline. Alianov able to keep it in. He'll circle it back into the middle. Koulibaly. Herediano looking to push it forward. They trail by two, just a couple of minutes remaining in this match. Hardware almost assured for Saprisa at this point as the ball will go all the way through to Conte. Freddy Gonzalez playing it up the middle. Koulibaly heading it forward. Perez can't control it. Marrera gets it back. Sekaria back for Aquista. Ramirez quick pass through the Lopez. He's beyond the defense, but he can't beat Shimura with that one. Nice save by the Herediano keeper, but another corner chance for Saprisa. This one to be taken by Alejandro Braun. Sending it in from the near corner. Duarte can't get his head on it. Cordero will play it. Marrera across for Lopez. He's blocked. Marrera's second attempt will sail into the stands and go harmlessly out of play. Three minutes at and on. Not enough time for Herediano to come back. And Saprisa. For the second straight year, crowned Super Copa champions, another piece of hardware for Billy Flynn here in Costa Rica. But it does bear repeating that that is not the piece of hardware that we are looking to hoist this year. We want the Central American Cup. That'll earn us a berth in the round of 16 in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And of course, we want this to be the year where we are CONCACAF Champions Cup champions. The whole point of the save, it's why you keep coming back each and every day. If you like that video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you want to see what happens next, well, you just got to come back tomorrow. I hope to see everyone then. Thank you so much for all of your support. Until tomorrow, bye bye